welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar and this is the first part of the course we begin with the recitation of the mangala charana विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेह योखिलजगत चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरीहर्ति लीलया विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेह योखिलजगत चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरीहर्ति लीलया we have been studying so far what is samartha we have studied the karaka theory in brief we also studied the definitions of the six karakas and then we studied the two interpretations of the word samartha capable of and having the same meaning or samaha arthaha we said that when we say capable of it means capable of expressing the interconnected meanings what it means is that a word unit which is capable of expressing the interconnected meanings and according to the tradition a pratipadika is not capable alone of expressing the interconnected meanings so pratipadika is not samartha as it is not capable as it cannot express the interconnected meanings on its own without the pratyaya getting added to it and once you add a sup pratyaya to a pratipadika it becomes a pad then it becomes a samartha so it has to be a pad and pad is defined in paninian grammar as supningantam padam subantam tingantam cha पद सौज्ञम स्यात सो असुबंत एंड अ तिंगंत विच इज केपेबल ऑफ एक्सप्रेसिंग द इंटरकनेक्टेड मीनिंग्स इज वॉट इज समर्थ वी हैव ऑल्सो सीन दैट एज फर एज द पाणिनियन ग्रामर इज कंसर्न द तिंगंत विच शोज द इंटरकनेक्टेड मीनिंग्स इज नॉट स्टेटेड to be eligible for becoming input of the process of compounding and the second meaning of samartha is samaha arthaha having the same meaning so interlinked subantas are eligible to be compounded then they undergo the process of compounding which we shall study later on in this course this process involves several types of operations and then the compound is derived step by step with the help of rules laid down in the grammar and the grammar will generate output in the form of a nominal root very crucial very important and the grammar will generate output in the form of a nominal root so interlinked subantas are the input and the nominal root is the output nominal root is a pratipadika that is the output this pratipadika 
will mean the same as the interlinked subantas. That is the point. That is samaha arthaha. And then this output meaning will be one unit as against the interlinked subantas which are independent, separate units as far as meaning is concerned, as far as the word form is concerned and also the accent on the word form is concerned. But when the compounding happens, the output in the form of a pratipadika will be one unit as far as the word form, as far as the meaning and also the accent. It will have three features, aikapadya, aikarthya and also aikasvarya. Now we come to two important technical terms when we deal with samartha and the state of being samartha is samarthya. So there are two types of samarthyas described in the Mahabhashya of Patanjali, notably in the Samarthanika. And these two types of Samarthya are Vyapeksha and Ekarthi Bhava. Let us look at them in the words of the great Patanjali who composed the Vyakrana Mahabhashya. And let us quote Patanjali and try to understand the meaning of these two terms from his Samarthanika. The word Samartha is explained in the four ways by Patanjali in these passages. Sangatartha Samartha, Samsrishtartha Samartha, Samprekshitartha Samartha and Sambaddhartha Samartha. Out of which Sangatartha and Samsrishtartha, these are the explanations of Samartha when Ekarthi Bhava is the underlying principle and Samprekshitartha and Sambaddhartha is the meaning of Samartha when Vyapeksha is the underlying principle. So let us look at these in the words of Patanjali. Patanjali says, Tad yada tavat ekarthi bhavaha samarthyam tada evam vigraha karishyate sangatarthah samsrishtarthah samarthaha Tad yatha sangatam ghritam sangatam tailam iti ucchate eki bhutam iti gamyate Patanjali says, when we have ekarthi bhava as samarthya, then the word samartha will be dissolved in these two fashions, sangatartha and samsrishtartha. Just as we have sangatam ghritam and sangatam tailam, these are the usages. What it means is eki bhutam. So samsrishta is merging, Sangata is becoming one, going together. Ultimately, what it means is Eki Bhutam. Something that was not one has now become one. This is what is understood from Sangatartha and Samsrishtartha. This is what is primarily the meaning of Ekarthi Bhava. Yada Vyapeksha Samarthyam on the other hand, when we have Vyapeksha as the Samarthya, Tada Evam Vigraha Karishyate, then we will dissolve the word Samartha in the following fashion. Samprekshitarthaha Samarthaha and Sambaddhartha Samarthaha. Samprekshitartha is the meaning which is seen to be together. And Sambaddhartha is meaning that is tied together. So this is what is Vyapeksha Samarthya. And Sangatartha and Samsrishtartha 
is the dissolution of the compound samartha when ekarthi bhava is the underlying principle these are the two prominent explanations of ekarthi bhava and vipeksha and these explanations are at the base of the traditional explanation of these two concepts and the examples given by patanjali they elucidate the ideas far far clearly so eki bhutam is ekarthi bhavah and when such eki bhutatva does not happen it is vyapeksha samarthya so let us now focus on ekarthi bhavah of course when we talk of ekarthi bhavah we will invariably also talk about vyapeksha so there is a contrast but still let us focus on ekarthi bhava so the question asked is kim samartham nam and the answer is prathag artha nam ekarthi bhava samartha vachanam prathag artha nam padanam ekarthi bhava samartha mityachate so prathag artha prathag artha is having separate meaning so the words which are having separate meanings when they denote one meaning then they are called samarthas vakye prathag arthani rajnya purushah iti samase punah ekarthani raja purusha iti in the sentence we have two words rajnya and purushah and both these words denote meanings independently rajnya although interconnected yet the meaning retains its independent separate status and purusha but when it gets compounded it becomes a one unit denoting one meaning raja purusha is that one unit of word word form and this one word form denotes one meaning which is the king's man or the king's servant this is what is ekarthi bhava what are the differences between ekarthi bhava and vipeksha kah tarhi ekarthi bhava krutah visheshah what is the difference and these are the differences subalopah vyavadhanam yatheshtam anyatarena abhisambandha and swaraha subalopah vyavadhanam yatheshtam anyatarena abhisambandha and swaraha so subalopah means the non deletion of sub vyavadhana means intervention yatheshtam anyatarena abhisambandha means the order that can be changed in the sentence and also the relations with any of the constituents with the outside elements and finally swaraha that is accent now we shall deal with them one by one first subalopah so patanjali says supaha alopah bhavati vakye in the sentence sup is not deleted like radnyah purushah radnyah has got shashti vibhakti and purushah has got prathama vibhakti both the sups are intact samase punah na bhavati when you join them together when they become samsrishtarth when they become sangatarth then supah alopah na bhavati supah lopo bhavati then the sup gets deleted and so you get raja purusha the sup that was added after rajan and purusha they both get deleted and after raja purusha is derived as a compound as a pratipadika then you add another sup to it but that is added after the unit raja purusha as a whole 
Raja Purushaha has got a suffix that is not added to Purusha, that is added to Raja Purusha as one unit. So, in the Samasa, the Sup is deleted. Vyavadhanam cha bhavati vakye. In the sentence, there is intervention of words like Radneha Ruddhasya Purushaha. Samase na bhavati. Raja Purushaha iti. So, in the sentence where Radneha and Purushaha are interlinked, they can have an intervention of another word called Ruddhasya. But in the compound, this is not possible. This is not allowed. Because now compound has become an integrated, as a merged unit. And so, Raja and Purusha, they both do not retain their independent status, separate status. They have merged themselves together in one unit. And so, there cannot be an intervention between the two elements, the constituents. Yatheshtam anyatarena abhisambandhaha bhavati vakye. So, Radnya Purushaha can be also written as Purushaha Radnya. But this is not possible in Samasa. Samasena bhavati, Raja Purushaha iti. And finally, Dvau Svarau Bhavataha Vakye. In the sentence, because you have two units, Radnyaha and Purushaha, each one of them will have one accent. Dvau Svarau Bhavataha Vakye. Samase Punaha Eka Eva. In the compound, you will have only one accent, Raja Purushaha Iti. In this case, it will be the final vowel that will be accented Every other vowel will be not accented, will have anudatta accent. But this we shall deal with in a while. But these are the important distinctions between Ekarthi Bhava and Vipiksha stated so lucidly by the great Patanjali in his great Bhashya, the Vyakarana Mahabhashya. Patanjali has also enumerated some more distinctions. Ime tarhi ekarthi bhava kritaha visheshaha Sankhya visheshaha vyakta vidhanam luk upasarjana visheshanam and chayogaha These are those distinctions. Let us look at them one by one. Sankhya visheshaha Sankhya visheshaha bhavati vakye. Radnya purushaha, radnyohu purushaha, radnyam purushaha iti. So, radnya purushaha indicates that this is a servant of one king. But there could be one servant of two kings and also one servant of many kings. In order to indicate this nuance in the sentence, you have a facility of using different numbers, Radnyaha, Radnyoho, and Radnyam. But in the Samasa, this distinction is not possible to express. You can only say Raja Purushaha, and then it is not known how many kings are referred to in this compound by the word Raja. So, Sankhya Visheshaha Bhavati Vakye. In a sentence, you can express different numbers distinctly that is not possible as far as a compound is concerned. This is an important dis distinction. The second distinction is Vyakta Vidhanam. Vyakta Vidhanam Bhavati Vakye Brahmanasya Kambalaha Tishthati Iti So, there is clear explicit expression that this Kambala belongs to a Brahmin. So there is a Swaswami Bhava where Brahmin is the Swami and Kambala is the Swa. This is explicitly expressed by the words Brahmanasya Kambalaha. Samase Punaha Avyaktam 
in the samasa, however, this remains unexpressed and there is the scope of doubt as Patanjali rightly points out. He says, Sandeho bhavati sambuddhisyat shashti samasa hava iti. Whether this word brahmana is the sambodhana prathama ekavachana or whether this is a shashti samasa. This kind of doubt arises. The word sambuddhi used by Patanjali over here is a technical term which is assigned to the vibhakti pratyaya of the prathama in the sense of sambodhana. Ekavachanam sambuddhi sambodhane prathamaya ekavachanam sambuddhi saudhnyam syat. Then we have upasarjana visheshanam. Upasarjana visheshanam bhavati vakye. Ruddhasya rajnyaha purushaha iti. Upasarjana stands for a subordinate non-head element. In the sentence, even though something is upasarjana, something is not the head, still there is scope for a qualifier to be added to it. Riddhasya Rajnaha Purushaha. Even though Rajnaha is Upasarjana, Riddhasya can still be added as its qualifier. But this cannot be done in the Samasa. Samase Nabhavati Raja Purushaha. You cannot add Riddhasya. Riddhasya Raja Purushaha. This is not possible. In a sentence it is possible, but not in a Samasa. Samase Nabhavati. So, Upasarjana Visheshana is an important distinction between Ekarthi Bhava and the Vipeksha. And then we have Chayogaha. So, Chayogaha Bhavati Vakye. Sva Chayogaha, Swami Chayogaha, Ch. Sva Chayogaha, Radnaha, Gauhucha, Ashbaha, Ch, Purushas, Ch. Sva means something that is owned. Swami is the owner. Svacha Yogaha. So there is a king who owns either um, who owns bulls and cows as well as horses as well as men. So Gauhucha, Ashvascha, Purushascha. These are all the swars and cha indicating the addition can be added after each one of them, but you cannot do it in samasa. Samase na bhavati. Radnyaha gavashva purushaha. So gavashva purushaha is prathama bhavachana. You cannot add cha in between because they do not exist as independent constituents when they get compounded. Gavashva purusha as a compound is one independent unit now. Just as you have Svacha Yoga, you can also have Swami Cha Yoga. So Cha added to the names of the owners like Devadatta, Yadnidatta and Vishnumitra. So this cow or bull belongs to Devadatta, Yadnidatta and Vishnumitra who three have come together and who are the owners. Now you can add Cha to all of them. Devadatta Sya Cha, Yadnidatta Sya Cha. Vishnu Mitra Syacha Gauhu. But if you do the compounding, there you cannot add Cha after each one of them. Samase Nabhavati. Devadatta Yadnyadatta Vishnu Mitranam Gauhu. This is what you will have to say. These are the distinctions in Ekarthi Bhava and Vyapeksha. Samasa and Vakya. So, Samasa performs a different role and additional elements and some elements which are missing as far as the process is concerned and the output is concerned. And that is why Samasa becomes an extremely peculiar process. To summarize, we can say that Samarthya of two types Vipiksha as well as Ikarthi Bhava 
is interrelated and interdependent. Vyapeksha indicates the interrelation of meanings at the sentence level with independent status of each unit. And Ekarthi Bhava is based on these interrelated units as input and generates an output which is one unit where the constituents do not have independent status as far as Artha, Pada and Swara is concerned. So they have Aikarthya, Aikapadya and Aikasvarya as the features. The generated output has got something additional than the constituents. These are our referred texts, the traditional sources and in this particular lecture we have borrowed heavily from the Samarthanika from the great Vyakarana Mahabhashya of Patanjali. We salute all these great authors. Thank you very much.